Now the second lesson read by Sir John Mills. Though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels and have not charity, I am become a sounding brass or a tinkling cymbal. And though I have the gift of prophecy and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and though I have all faith so that I could remove mountains and have not charity, I am nothing. And though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor, and though I give my body to be burned, and have not charity, it profiteth me nothing. Charity suffereth long and is kind. Charity envieth not. Charity vaunteth not itself, is not puffed up, doth not behave itself unseemly, seeketh not her own, is not easily provoked, thinketh no evil, rejoiceth not in iniquity, but rejoiceth in the truth, beareth all things, believeth all things, hopeth all things, endureth all things. Charity never faileth, but whether there be prophecies, they shall fail. Whether there be tongues, they shall cease. Whether there be knowledge, it shall vanish away. For we know in part, and we prophesy in part. But when that which is perfect is come, then that which is in part shall be done away. When I was a child, I spake as a child, I understood as a child, I thought as a child. But when I became a man, I put away childish things. For now we see through a glass darkly, but then face to face. Now I know in part, but then I shall know, even as also I am known. And now abideth faith, hope, charity, these three, but the greatest of these is charity. Now follow two readings, the first by Dame Peggy Ashcroft. Weep no more, woeful shepherds. Weep no more. For Lysidas, your sorrow, is not dead. Sunk though he be beneath the watery floor, so sinks the day star in the ocean bed, and yet anon repairs his drooping head and tricks his beams, and with new spangled oar flames in the forehead of the morning sky. So Lysidas sunk low, but mounted high through the dear might of him that walked the waves, where other groves and other streams along, with nectar pure his oozy locks he laves, and hears the unexpressive nuptial song in the blessed kingdoms meek of joy and love. There entertain him all the saints above in solemn troops and sweet societies that sing and singing in their glory move and wipe the tears forever from his eyes. Now, Lysidas, 
the shepherds weep no more. Henceforth, thou art the genius of the shore in thy large recompense, and shalt be good to all that wander in that perilous flood. Thus sang the uncouth swain to the oaks and rills, while the still morn went out with sandals gray. He touched the tender stops of various quills with eager thought warbling his Doric lay. And now the sun had stretched out all the hills and now was dropped into the western bay. At last he rose and twitched his mantle blue tomorrow to fresh woods and pastures new. And now Dame Peggy's place at the lectern here in the Sacrarium of Westminster Abbey will be taken for the second reading by Sir John Gielgud. Death, be not proud. Though some have called thee mighty and dreadful, for thou art not so. For those whom thou thinkst thou dost overthrow, die not, poor death, nor, that, nor yet canst thou kill me. From rest and sleep, which but are thy, thy pictures be, much pleasure then from thee much more must flow. And soonest our best men with thee do go, rest of their bones and soul's delivery. Thou art slave to fate, chance, kings and desperate men, and dust with poison, war and sickness dwell, and poppy or charms can make, thee, can make us sleep as well and better than thy stroke. Why swellst thou then? One short sleep past, we wake eternally, and death shall be no more. Death, thou shalt die. And in the last scene of Hamlet, he says, not a whit, we defy augury. There's a special providence in the fall of a sparrow. If it be now, it is not to come. If it be not to come, it will be now. If it be not now, yet it will come. The readiness is all. Since no man hath aught of what he leaves, what is't to leave betimes? Let be.